So I came back here in Montreal, my, the lab where I did my PhD, to play around with these cards because there are so many cards. And I'm going to do something hopefully pretty awesome about these. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is to make a pile that goes as far as possible. The distance I've gone so far is like uh, one card and a half, like a bit more than a card. So how far do you think I can go like that? It's a very cool math question to and physics question to try to answer. So I suggest you think about it while I do my best. So here I got ooh, two cards over two. The trick is to start with a good basis and try to slowly get further and further. Pretty good! Pretty good! Yeah, the problem is that the cards are not straight. That's sort of the bending, because of the weight here, the overweight here, they're sort of bending forward. So uh, we're far from the theoretical straight card that I would wish to be studying. Ah! Bottom line is I've uh, been very very bad. Uh, what I would love is for you to try to, to do this kind of tower. Let's first look at the single card. How far can it overhang? Easy, one half card. This is because at this position the center of gravity of the card, which is at half of the card, still hangs above the table it sits on. Another way of saying this is that no more than half of the card is beyond the table. What about if I now have two cards? Well, two things need to be guaranteed. First, the two cards all together must not fall off the table. This corresponds to saying that the center of gravity should lie above the table. Still another way of saying this is to require that no more than half of all cards is beyond the table. In our example, the dotted blue segment corresponds to two halves cards overhanging, while the dotted green segment shows that an additional half card is overhanging. Overall, that's three halves cards overhanging, which is more than half of all cards. Thus, the two cards will fall off the table. Second, the top cards must not fall off the bottom card. This means that no more than half of the top card can overhang beyond the bottom card. Here's how I do it. I'll have the bottom card overhanging the table by half a half card, while the top card overhangs the bottom card by one half card. Let us verify that this configuration theoretically works. First, the fraction of the two cards that is beyond the table is two half halves plus one half. These add up to two half cards. There's no more than half of all cards, so we're good. For the second condition, we can just notice that we are exactly in the previous one card configuration where the table is replaced by the bottom card. So once again, we are all good. Let's move on to three cards. What I'll do is I'll have the bottom card overhanging the table by a third of half a card. And then I'll just put the two top cards exactly as I did earlier by now considering that this bottom card was the earlier table. That way, I know that the two top cards will hold above the bottom card. So all I need to check is that the center of gravity of the three cards all together is really above the table. Well, let's see what fraction of the cards is beyond the table. You have again three thirds of half a card plus two halves of half a card plus one half of a card. These add up to three halves of a card. Do you see the pattern now? 
When we have n cards, we will have the bottom card overhanging the table by one over n of half a card. And then we put the rest of the cards above this bottom card as we would put them on the table if we only had n minus 1 cards. Now, how far does this overhanging go? Well, the bottom card takes us 1 over n of half a card beyond the table. The second bottom card takes us 1 over n minus 1 of half a card further and so on until the top card which takes us a full half a card further. In the end, the total distance beyond the table that we've gone will be in units of cards 1 half of 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third and so on until 1 over n. So this sum, 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth and so on, is that big? Does it go to infinity or does it stop like Zeno's sum that we talked about in a previous episode? What do you think? Well, let's represent the terms of this sum with pi's. Now, let's put the first and second slices aside. Let's now regroup the third and fourth slices, then the fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth slices and then all the slices between the 9th and the 16th and so on. Do you notice it? All sets of slices that I've constructed is always going to be at least one half. That's because in the kth set I will have 2 to the k minus 1 slices and the smallest of them all is still at least 1 over 2 to the power k. But I have infinitely many such sets, so I will have in total at least infinitely many times half a pi. And infinitely many half a pi, that's an infinite amount of pi. Turns out this sum, which is called the harmonic series, goes to infinity. What I mean by that is that no matter what big number you think of, maybe you're thinking about Graham's number, then no matter what number you're thinking of, the sum of 1 over n will eventually, if you add sufficiently many terms, exceed the number you're thinking of. In other words, at least in theory, this pile, if I have sufficiently many cards in this pile, I can go as far as I want. I could go up to the world and I could go even to Europe with this pile. So even though I haven't succeeded it myself, I could theoretically go to the world. How crazy is that? It's unbelievable. It's so unbelievable that it's not believable. I mean, could I actually get to the wall? How many cards do I need to get to the wall? So the wall is about five meters away from me. And a card here is about 10 centimeters, let's say. So to go to the wall, I would need a 50 card long piling. So the question boils down to how many cards do I need? What's the end that I need? So that the sum of one plus a half plus a third until one over n exceeds 100. Well, let's try a few numbers for for n. If I take n equals a thousand, I get seven. So with n equals a thousand, I would get three cards and a half away. And when you think about it, it's not so bad what I did previously. So if I have a million cards, I would get seven cards away. That's not such a great improvement. What about if I have a billion cards? If I have a billion cards, I would get, well, 10.5 cards away. And remember, I needed to get to 50 cards away. So really here, we're still nowhere near what's sufficient to get to the wall. A billion cards is not enough. What, what the hell? In the 18th century, it was the great Leonhard Euler who first proved that the so-called harmonic sum, one plus one half plus one third plus one and so on to one over n, is about the natural logarithm of n which roughly corresponds to 2.3 times the number of digits of n. Actually, it would be exactly the number of digits of n if instead of in base 10 or in base 2, the number n was written in base e, where e is about 2.718 and is called Euler's constant. But I guess that's a story for another time. And so this all means that the number of cards that I will need to get to the world is 
something like a 100 digit number well actually it's more like 100 digit in base e so that's e to the 100 and that's about 10 to the 43 10 to the 43 cards that's stupidly huge in fact assuming that cards are 0.1 millimeter thick then the pile of cards upwards if you have 10 to the 43 cards is going to be much bigger than the size of the observable universe so no uh, we will not get to the wall not today hey so i hope you've enjoyed this video next time we're going to be talking about uh, ninfinsum which is going to be even crazier than the, the infinitums we've been talking about so far is the one that Henry Rich already, already mentioned once uh, on minute physics, namely the sum of the powers of 2, 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 and so on is equal to minus 1. And I'm going to try to argue that this is true. So bear with me for next time. In the meanwhile, please comment, share. Uh, this video send it to your friends and uh, subscribe to the channel and i hope i'll see you next time okay i'm going in for the for the big tower now we'll see how far i can go it's already hard to make them fit above one another <sighs> practice is so much harder than theory right gosh i love theory so much right now Theory is nice, beautiful, it always works. Practice is messy and possibly in a few seconds. <laughs>